Hey everybody, we're going to talk about beat mapping just for a minute today. This is something that I don't use that often because of the way I work in terms of setting the tempo and all the things with MIDI, but sometimes I find myself in need of a custom tempo to match a pre-existing piece of audio. So for instance, I've got this bass part. and it's just gonna chug along there. But it's not to a click track. And we can tell that primarily at the very beginning. You'll hear just in that little bit that the tempo changes quite a bit. So first and foremost, when using beat mapping, let's actually get it sh turned on over here. Let's configure the global tracks. I don't need marker or arrangement, but I want tempo and beat mapping. And we can resize these however we want. One of the very first things to do is to come into beat mapping under the menu and say, analyze transients. And this is really important. You can't use flex and the beat mapping transients at the same time. That's because when flex is turned on and we change the beat markers, it will actually move this and keep it at the exact same place. You'll understand that more in a second when I show you what these actual beat mapping transients actually do. Next step after we get the transients analyzed is that I usually set the BPM counter on the track with the audio just to get a sense for what that tempo is. <laughs> You'll see it's about 112. A little earlier I did it and at the beginning it was more like a 111. We're gonna go with 112. And I always change this before I do any other work. I change the whole project to get it close. And that's because if you don't, you're gonna end up with a huge jump at the beginning when it's initially compensating. So I figure out pretty close to what the tempo is and then I set it to that and then we can start working on the beat mapping. Now we can turn that off, get it out of the way. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And you'll see we have downbeat, downbeat, downbeat. It's kind of close, but kind of not at the same time. And so we're gonna to need to figure this out. So that tempo is not exactly right. I'm gonna turn on the metronome because I want to be able to hear the tempo with it. You'll hear it's getting further and further off. And that's not because the tempo is really changing that much. It's just that the band, because they played this as a whole rhythm section, is actually losing some time. And so even though it sounds like it's getting further and further apart, it's just that pieces are missing and it jumps ahead a little bit. So now I'm gonna come through here and figure out some good waypoints. So this very first section, I'm not gonna do every beat, I don't think, at first. Let's go back to the beginning. So that's one right here. See how different that is? But then it gets a little closer again. One more time. So it's really here. Now you see this little transient marker, and then along the beat mapping, I've got these little white lines that show up. So what I'm gonna be doing is changing the tempo to match the audio content. So I'm gonna click on this and drag it over to that transient marker. You'll see we go up to 114.3029. And then there's a little bit of variance here. This whole beginning section is a little bit off. So. And then there's a weird little delay there. And at first I wasn't sure if this was the downbeat or if the bigger thing was. I think it's really the bigger. But you'll see there's no real clear transient marker there. So I'm gonna hold down control and shift and it lets me create on the fly one of those. And then I'm gonna pull it back to that. 
So now I've got one beat here, which is really kind of funky. And then it goes right back to 112. And then it's going to be moving a little bit all over the place here. And we're going to have to just lock some of these in. You'll see some of them are a little closer than others. Let's do this one now. And we're back off. It looks like for a lot of this, we're just going to have to kind of be adjusting. The bigger the adjustment, the better usually, so we don't have quite so many small micro changes. But sometimes we just can't help that because it really is kind of fluctuating. Now, bass part, if it's in the pocket or adjusting out a little bit, it's going to be hard to do this for a drum kit. I'll show you why in a second what I mean by that. If we do this first, nine times out of ten, I prefer to do the drums for this kind of work. But we don't always have that because the bass can move around a little bit more, but drums can't. So let's check this with the metronome just up to that point. Okay, so that's all fine and good, but let's test this out with an actual drummer. And let's do something simple here. Yeah. One more time, you'll hear there's a couple spots where the drums really don't sound right. Right there. There are a few options once we have this where we could actually then change the tempo and it would expand that out. Part of that has to do with actually going in here and turning on flex time. Um, we're going to save that for another tutorial a different day because I think that there are lots of things we can talk about beat mapping and we get into a little bit advanced things. I just want to do this basic intro showing you how we could actually get uh, a simple bass part here, beat mapped, add it to drums, and even though we have a couple funky spots because of the bass part's original part, it actually is now matching all of the tempo for that section that we did. Okay, that's beat mapping, at least beat mapping 101. I definitely want to do more with this, but we're going to save it for a different day. Okay, see you next time.